speaking, is one of the most common fears that people have. In serving, it often brings higher than the fear of death. Today, we'll be covering Chapter 3, Make the Most of the Mess. This presentation will be going over five key points of the chapter. The first key point is hooking your audience's attention. A moment ago, when I mentioned the fear of public speaking, that was a hook. That's what started in a compelling way. You would want to start with something that is exciting, interesting, or otherwise gets an audience's attention. Next, you will want to end your message with emphasis. The end of the message presents an opportunity to emphasize the important part of the message. An important step in determining how your message will hook the audience's attention is to analyze what gets their attention. Different audiences often have different interests. You can also use resist techniques to help hook the audience's attention as well. R stands for relevant. Emphasize why the message is relevant to your audience's needs. Emotion. Make an emotional connection. Share something personal that they can connect with, or show pictures, videos that captures a feeling. Surprise! Add an element of surprise. You can do this by making a change in your delivery style, or sharing a fact about the topic that you found surprising. Include Find a way to include people. Allow your audience interact with your message by asking them questions or having them to discuss something with their neighbors. Sensors. Including pictures, videos, audio will engage more of their senses. Tension. Create some tension with good pacing or having the audience confront something controversial. You can create tension which will help keep the audience's attention. Now, Rocky will be talking about the second and third key points. Okay, here we go. Now that you know how to hold the attention, I'll be talking about how to hold it, uh, how to hold it in a structured, engaging way. First, you have to be direct, and you have to put your conclusion first. By doing that, uh, you, when the attention is the highest in the beginning of the paragraph, as you can see, uh, presentation, as you can see in the beginning, and the attention goes down in a slump over here, and by the end, the attention is the highest. So you want to re repeat it at the end of your presentation. There's three benefits of doing this. The first is it's easy to follow, and it saves time, and it uh, focuses on the audience's interest. Second of all, you want to create an information chunk. The human brain only holds about 30 seconds of information, and that's not very much. And it's actually about four bits of inf information. That does not mean you stand up, you make four points, and you just sit down. That means you have to try to uh, present your data efficiently and fast, so your audience can actually remember the important, important points. Here are some strategies you can use. You, you want to create logical categories. By that, I mean by you're using uh, several patterns that are, uh, you have patterns in your presentation, and they're similar in the way that your audience can compare them and contrast them. You want to limit the number of sections. The best section, uh, the best number of sections to have is three, a beginning, a middle, and an end. By doing that, your audience have a really easy way to follow it, and your presentation will go really smooth. The third key point over here is select a structural pattern. Here are some very common patterns that people usually use. The first one is topic. You're listing a limited number of topics in your presentation, so it's good, easy and really good to follow. The second is importance. You're prioritizing on from either from most to least important or from least to most important. 
So everyone has time. You're going by chronological, uh, chronological order, um, such as the timeline. The fourth one is process. Process is how. For example, quality control. Uh, fifth one is location. Say you're taking the, your audience on a tour by using different locations, you're jumping around, showing them pictures, and fancy stuff. Next one is contrast. You're showing two sides of the things, um, such as global warming, good and bad. Do you believe it? The, uh, the last one is solution. You present a question at first, then you come up with a solution or several solutions, and ending up with examples. All right, direct versus indirect. There's a lot over here, but I'll just uh, I'll just make my word for you guys. Uh, tell you guys what's important. First of all, direct. When do you use it? You use it whenever it's possible. It's the best way to get information through, and it makes the contacts much easier to follow. And it's one of the most efficient way to put up information. Indirect. Why do you use indirect? Because your credibility is low. You don't have the audience, or you're in a different culture norm. It's not usually easy for everyone to agree to you, especially if you're in a different country. Next. Our next key point, our third one, is how to make your, uh, take steps to improve your recall. You have to share the meaning before the details. Beginners and experts access information very, very differently. Beginners will look at it, they, they won't remember the details of your context. However, experts, when, when you mention the meaning, they will link to the details immediately. So there's a different way of doing, doing so. Um, to help everyone process their information, you have to put your details into your context and slowly, but not, not everything at once. Next, you have to show them. Don't just tell them. Visual plus auditory equals improved retention. That is very important. Because you want to reinforce the information you want to speak, you, what you want to get to the audience. It is very important to re keep repeating the important points. Do not be afraid to uh, repeat the same stuff over and over again if it's really important and you deem it necessary. Give people breaks from new information. I found this very interesting thing on the internet actually. Uh, it's called a Twitter break. I've never heard of it before. It, all I knew is coffee breaks, stress breaks, and never a Twitter break. It's actually when you just give like a short two, one minute even break where people just look at their phones and get their message through. I mean, they can talk through with the presentation or do whatever they want. And that actually helps people focus their attention a lot better in the following presentation. Next, I'll pass it on to Kit. And he'll be talking about four to six key points. So, boss outcomes will be comparing research to other meetings. If your boss is telling you you're doing a presentation, chances are you're doing a presentation. But considering the situation such as the audience size, the type of message that you want to convey, and the intent of your message, you might want to consider these other mediums that have shown up here. I will be, I am here to talk about the pros and cons for each of them. The pros are already listed, but I'll talk about the cons for myself. First, private conversation. If your information is confidential, sensitive, and you don't want it to be leaked out to outside members, then you want to set up private conversations. These are little, small meetings, individual, one-to-one -one meetings. These show importance of confidentiality, and it shows, it deals with their concern and personal views of the topic. The backdrop of this would be, it takes too much time. If you have to schedule an individual every single week, day, or month, it takes too much time. And as we know in business, time is money. Also, when you set up these so many meetings with the individuals, your body gets fatigued, and depending on the individual, individual's status and the certain information on the to them, they get different versions. And thirdly, if you always just do personal one-on-one -on -one meetings, there's no way you can have a group decision. The second one is a meeting. If you want a lot of group interactions and you want more group involvement, this is where you want to tackle. 
Also, you want information from the group itself if you're unsure of the group members at the top. A uh, backdrop with this would be if you have angry group members, you can't avoid them. They're non-verbal cues and their facial expressions show a lot and there's no way to avoid it. And again, lack of privacy. If it's a group meeting, if there's confidential information, there's no way you can hide it and you just have to display it. The third one would be group meetings via Skype, uh, Ubu, whichever online presence you would like to take. The best advantage this would have if members are too far away. If they're not in the same city level, in the same state, it takes too much time, takes too much money to schedule a meeting and then conf conflicts with everybody's schedule. The major backdrop with this would be bad camera angles because you may not be spared to see their social non-verbal cues and that's very important in the meeting if you actually want to see them. And the third would be writing. The biggest advantage of writing is if you're talking, let's say, a presentation over a digital system and you're in a room full of people that are not really educated in those types of things. A, the writing when you hand out a writing material, they can have an outline of it so they can kind of follow the way through. But it's also a backdrop. When you hand out writings to them, they may be reading when you need them to be listening. And as for the next one, instead of comparing using another medium, you using another medium instead of presentation, you're actually adding a medium. Again, it should be handouts or emails. Those two are very important when it comes to complex data and those are the ones you really need to know. Q&A, if you want the audience to get involved, ask questions, get the feedback, get uh, what you need to get them to say. The advantages, it could be as small as low key ex exchanges or a dismatch, it can spiral to a big debate, it will take too much time. The third one, layered communication efforts. Your presentation may not be the only thing you're doing and when it's layered out to be the first one, you may want to do a follow-up presentation because the first pre if the first thing you're doing is presenting to a group of, of an audience, there's no way you can attack each and every objective that you need to. So follow-up reports, follow-up meetings, and information gathering. If your presentation is last, set up little meetings with small groups with people so you so you know what topic to attack down and also to inform them. With. And lastly, if the audience has negative bias, if you know your topic will not rub real good with the audience. You might want to set up private meetings with influential members of the audience, not just anybody, but people who can actually influence them. To listen to their objectives and views and try to find a mutual agreement. And to summarize it, I'll pass it on to